Testing, testing, one, two, three. Testing, testing, one, two, three. We are on the air. This is Thesis. Three, two, one. We are on the air. This is Thesis. Everything is everything. I am your host, Jay Marie. How's it going out there, folks? Hope you're doing well. Thank you for showing up and hanging out with us today. Coming to you live from Zombieland. Yes, sir. All right. Well, I want to thank you guys for showing up and hanging out with us today. Uh, It's been a minute, but we are here. We are healthy. And I hope you find yourself well and safe and all of those good things. Uh, Before we get started, if you're new to the show, please uh, don't forget to hit the like, subscribe button, the follow button, wherever you're listening to us. Uh, Our home base is Spotify. So if you are there, just hit that little subscribe button. I think I don't even know what it is. Follow us on Facebook. Follow us on X. I am very active on X, so you want to follow us there. You don't want to miss a thing. And uh, what else? That's it. Oh, if you do like the show, please don't forget to tell your friends about it. All right. So um, let's go ahead and jump right in to uh, what I want to talk about. So I've been thinking a while already about our next um, conversation that we needed to have. And just looking at what's going on in the world, really in the West, uh, in America and in the Western countries in Europe, there's there's so much going on um, in government and also with like these cultures are clashing because of mass, you know, migration, mass illegal immigration. You know, there's millions of people being moved around the planet at the moment. Um, in ways that hasn't been seen before, almost intentionally, right? So I wanted to talk about culture. We need to talk about culture uh, because it, you know, um, we need to understand the importance of it. What is it? We're going to dive into a little bit like what is it? A couple of different examples of our culture here in America. Uh, And we're going to take a look and examine maybe some other cultures that exist around the world. And then we're going to look at them and compare them and 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 see if 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 some of these things, um, you know, try to figure out why some of these things are happening around the world. Maybe not the reason, but maybe we could see a cause for some of these things. Right. So culture, we hear culture. And one of the first things we think about, like, for instance, I'm a Latino, a lot of us. So when we hear culture, let's say in the Latino community, we think, you know, Spanish music, we think mariachis or, you know, these celebrations that happen in the in the Latin American countries. Um, we think of dances and um, maybe certain alcohols and this and that. Right. So so uh, the culture uh, is kind of like the, the, the things that the people have developed uh, in their nation and the things that they do and every right. So we're, we're like the, I'm Latino, right? So, so in our culture, we have music. We have, I'm in Texas, but we have Tecano music. We have Norteño music, the accordion, right? We have mariachi music, which is, which is really nice. And, you know, goes way back. We have all these things that, that are indicative of, oh, this is the, the Mexican culture, right? These are Mexicans. You can tell because of the mariachi, right? The, the, the things that they're wearing, or the things that they're singing about, right? But a lot of the a lot of the Latin American co- uh, uh, nations, countries have similar. I mean, we're very similar because you know we all kind of c- have that same background with the uh, Spanish people that came long ago and you know um, popul- populated a lot of these places. As the so a lot of the cultures are the same. Like for instance. Uh, we look at, you know, Halloween, for instance, in America, it, it happens in October uh, around this time of year. We've developed what we call Halloween. We dress up and we trick or treat and stuff. But the rest of the world has what, you know, the, the, the Day of the Dead, Dia de los Muertos or All Hallows Eve. Each culture seems like has the same similar they're kind of similar that has you know a celebration that has to do with the dead people and the spirits coming back and maybe wearing costumes and off making offerings right dia de los muertos they make offerings 
to the dead uh, that come and visit their family members and they'll bring them food and alcohol and sit and talk with them. They make offerings in, in, in uh, Halloween here in America. The kids go and they, and, and they trick or treat and you give them candy. Right. But all these cultures around the world have a similar something about this time of year. And it has to do with death, maybe not dying necessarily, but the afterlife, the where the people that have left us, you know, their mem their memories, something about the spirits roaming the earth, right? So it's almost like in America, it's a uh, amalgam, you know, like it, it's a uh, it, like if you put it all in a pot, all these different uh, parts of culture from different parts of the world, you put them all in a pot, and then what you get the finished product is Halloween, right? Because all these little pieces of the different cultures got mixed together and become what, for instance, what Halloween is, right? So the American culture is something like here in America, our culture is, is a mix of, of the cultures from around the world when it comes to our music and our food and traditions and stuff like that, right? But then we also have our own unique culture in America, you know, because we have certain laws that we follow. You know, we have certain ways of respecting each other when we're at the store or when we're on the road. You know, that is part of the culture, too. Right? That is part of culture in and of itself. Right. How we can live next to each other without fighting and beating each other up you know, your neighbors, people across town even or whatever. We can go to the store and stand in a line and shop at the same place or whatever without, you know, having to fight each other. There's there's exceptions out there. Sure, people act up and people mess, you know, act a fool, whatever. But for the most part, we can eat dinner together at restaurants, depend, no, no matter our color of our skin or our gender or whatever. We can all sit together, eat, pay for our food, enjoy an evening without without really worrying about something out of the ordinary happening because our culture here in America has has uh, this is what it's become. It's it's respecting your neighbor, loving your neighbor, being able to be a, among people that have, you know, that aren't your same background or culture or or color, skin color, whatever, and 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 enjoy life like like nothing that that's what the culture is here in america at least that's what it's supposed to be and that's what it has been for a while for a long while now but but recently there seems to be an uptick an uprise in folks out there in in education in the colleges and um, i don't know the philosophers out there modern day philosophers that starting that have been starting recently to to try to focus people in more on their skin color or their culture or you know your background and 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 wanting people to pay more attention to those things you know we hear a lot about the white supremacy or we hear about all these things that are always always um always putting into the conversation race always putting into the conversation uh um, uh, culture and tradition and, and, and nations, right? Now, when we're talking about, like, for instance, migration, right? What's supposed to be migration, there's laws and order for these things the way they're supposed to happen. But in recent years, there, there's been, they've thrown, they've thrown the book out of, of whatever laws and order and processes are supposed to be happening to integrate people at a, at a, at a nice rate, you know, um, without without it being a a um, a, a such a impact, uh, without it causing such an impact on on the um, on the cities, right, and on the people that you're you know you're importing millions of people, and you're you they have to they have to have a place, they have to go somewhere, right? So these cultures will clash 
when when things like this are happening with the migration, illegal immigration, not just in America, but all over the world, there's cultures that have nothing in common that are instantly being brought together. And there are a lot of clashes going on, culture clashes, but even physical clashes in some instances. Right. So when we look at let's when we look at America, right, we've got we've been so used to we we're, we are so used to being able to do these things like, you know, you know, um, not being concerned, depending what neighborhood you live in and stuff like that, but not being concerned of 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 people breaking into your house or being robbed at the store or being carjacked or even being hit while you're driving down the road by somebody who hasn't you know who doesn't have a driver's license or who's new to the country and doesn't understand our driving laws or our driving patterns or those type of things right we're so used to the the calmness and the um, uh, predictability of of because we we know we if we all act the same then things become predictable when i'm on the road we're all on the same playing field right we're all playing by the same law by the same uh rule book we're all playing by the same rule book. So the road becomes predictable, right? And if you in, in, um, input someone into that, into that system that, has, that doesn't play by the same rule book, that doesn't even know the rule book exists, right? Because let's say they are from a place that doesn't have the rule books for the road, where it's just like drive, you know? There's no street lights. There's no red lights. There's no crosswalks, right? So when we start looking at these things, we got we to gotta try to put ourselves in a position to see further than our own space. This is what we're used to. Red lights, cross car, you know, cr um, crosswalks, all these things, right? People be behaving at the store. We're so used to these things because we all have that same programming, right? Inside of us of, hey, this is how we're going to behave. When we go to the restaurant, we're, we're going to behave, right? So when we, st when we start trying to think of the effects of, let's say, immigration, illegal immigration, mass migration, then we have to start putting ourselves into the shoes of the people that are coming, right? So culture, there's, 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 there's thousands of, you know, there's hundreds of cultures around the world nations, peoples, people live in the mountains, people live in the jungles, people live in the deserts, right? In some places, like, hey, if I'm hungry, I could go down the street, 7-Eleven, one of the restaurants, KFC, whatever, I could get some food, go to the grocery store. Some places in the world don't have grocery stores or gas stations and stuff like that. Where people, so people have to forge for their food, right? On the hillside, on the, on the monte, in the mountains, in the in the woods, in the forest, where there is not this modern civilization that we have, cities, electricity, you know, running water and all that, uh, sewer systems and all these things, communication, everything. There's places that have none of that, right? They have none of that. And the people survive in those places the way they do. They forage for food, they grow, they do whatever. Now, if you were to take, like, let's, let's imagine one of these places, right? We'll pick anywhere in the world, whether it's in in some part of a desert somewhere on a, on a hillside, on a mountainside near a jungle. Right. Let's take let's 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 imagine and let's go to one of those places in our mind. Right. That don't have these these things that we have, you know, they might have clothing and stuff like that. And I'm not thinking I'm not thinking like, uh, you know, natives and, and tribes and stuff. No, small villages and stuff like that where, you know, they have modern clothing and, and shoes and maybe, but there's hardly no electricity. There's hardly any, no communications, right? Maybe some of the people have cell phones, right? There's places in the world that are very um, poor, let's say, compared to our standard of living. Let's go to one of those places, right? And, let, and let's take a hundred of those people that are used to that way of life, that are used to that way of, of getting, gathering their food or treating each other or the way they, they do conflict resolution, whether it be violent or not otherwise with with the people, you know, neighboring 
try and people neighboring villages or whatever right let's take that and instantly put them in the middle of a city in the middle of a modern society now that that's going to be a clash for both sides you know from folks who who and this is not and and this is not in, and this is not i'm not pointing directly at a certain people or anything but these cultures are different and when you bring them together in such a in such a fast manner without without it you know uh giving chance for assimilation and, and people to get used to each other and everything when you just throw them together there's a clash because if if and we're noticing that it, it seems to be just people being being brought or or sent or they just come whatever and when you get here you don't have a job right there, there's no jobs there's no there's hardly any housing there's none of these things that we we don't really have for ourselves and now we're supposed to find it for millions of others that are just thrown here brought here dropped off here cultures from all or people from all over the world from different cultures that are some cultures are violent some cultures don't use modern conflict resolution they fight with swords and they fight with knives and they're very violent. Some cultures don't respect women. Some cultures, you know, see it proper in the abuse of women. Right. Some cultures have to forge for their food. Right. So the, the people that come from that small village that are used to forging for their food, you brought them and you drop them off in the middle of a city. There's hardly any housing. There's no jobs. People. So. You know, when when you first come, right, you might get your ID or something like that. But that doesn't instantly give you all the, the amenities that we need, cars and jobs and monies and bank accounts. Those things can sure they can eventually get to there. Right. I'm new to this place, but I can eventually get these things. I have to assimilate myself. I have to work hard. I have to do these things to to become part of the, the culture that I am in now. I have to assimilate. I have to do work to become, you know, if I'm from somewhere else, I have to do work to become what it is in a, uh, an American is. How do they behave? How do they act? What am I supposed to do? I need to look to the Americans to figure out the proper behavior, proper manners of being uh, and use them as an example so I can be propelled forward. That's what a common, that's what logic, that'll be a logical way for people to, to, to come in, right? When there's time, when there's when when it's calm and 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 people have time to assimilate, people have time to to get regular to 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 um, start learning the our processes, our ways of life, our modes of behavior. But when we're thinking 10 million, 15 million, 20 million people from all over the world. That can become a problem. You know, we've heard a lot about these gangs that have taken over buildings, right? And in, in Colorado and, and some in, in El Paso or some hotel. We've heard these stories online about these gang members, different types of gang members from different countries that are very organized, but very violent. You know, so if we were to go, so now let's zoom into where they're from, right? These, these, whoever these gangs are, whatever country they're from, whoever, right? There's a bunch of people from all over the place, but we go to their land, right? We'll go to their nation, whatever nation they're from. The reason why they've become that violence or the reason why they are the way they are is because of the culture that surrounds them there in their nation. You know, the the lack of law enforcement, um, political, you know, the crooked political uh, politi politicians who lie and cheat and steal. Right. Then there's there's gangs and then there's um, um, cartels and then there's all kinds of stuff that goes on in these worlds. Right. And in these nations. Right. And then police like the police and, and mostly and. OK, this is this is something that's so crazy compared to the American culture. Most of the police in in uh, 
I would say all across the Latin American countries, most of the cops don't ask for for bribes. They take your money. Some will be respectful and they'll say, hey, well, you know, you could just hand, you know, give me a little sum and I'll just whatever. Some will be nice and do that. But mo for the most part, the cops like in Mexico, they'll take your money. If they if you are in a, you know, in a situation that's kind of iffy, if you're a tourist, if you're someone who doesn't really understand the laws and stuff like I mean, it's hard to the law and order down there is it's a little bit. There's not nothing compared to like ours. But the cops themselves, well, some, like I said, if they're friendly, they'll ask you for a bribe, but others will just take your money. Like, for instance, my buddy uh, Fabian, he lives down there in Cancun and and marijuana is legal in Mexico now. Right. So so one day he's walking and he's smoking and some cops. Uh, I think he probably had a sack or something, but the cops see him and and they they pick him up and they start roughing or not. They didn't rough him up, like beat him up, but they put handcuffs on him. They threw him in the car. And, hey, why are you smoking and all this? And here's the thing is he he couldn't. He like when he told me the story, he couldn't complain. You can't complain. Hey, it's legal now. What are you all doing? Oh, yeah. They'll crack. They'll crack you on. You know, Though if you if you push back and you're alone and, you know, depending where they got you at. Somebody's car. I mean, you'll disappear. Some of these cops will disappear you because they're connected or whatever. Right. So so these cops, they threw them in the back. They told them, oh, no, nah, you know, you shouldn't have weed or whatever. And they drove him towards the woods. They didn't tell him nothing. They just went towards the woods for no reason. And my, my, my nigga was shitting it. You know, he was, of course, scary. Well, where are you taking me? But where are you going? You could fight. <laughs> you could try to fight or you could just play it cool. You know, if you play it cool, you know, so they took him over by the woods uh, and just kind of just kind of took him for a ride, not really telling them nothing or whatever. But then they told him, all right, well, well, how much money you got on you? And he probably had like 800 pesos or something. That's probably like 40, 40 bucks. Uh, and they just took it from him. They took his weed. They took his money. And then. They just dropped them off like somewhere over there, like not in the woods. They just pulled towards the city and then, all right, get off. Boom. And they left them there. That's a Mexico City police department in you know, Mexico City. Uh, that was in Cancun. But those are Cancun police, metropolitan police, whatever. They'll take your money, They'll, uh, you know. That's the culture down there, right? That, and that's our neighbor. That's Mexico, right? In Mexico, which is our neighboring culture of people right next door to us, right? And our neighbor right across the street. All right, Mexico. The culture and politics is nothing like ours. In the past year, uh, how many? Did I write it down? No. Something like 42 politicians were killed were assassinated mayors or governors or people trying to run for different political stations killed like 42 of them and that's that's politicians those are the people that we vote for that represent you in your district or in your state or in your senate in one year that's just that's the culture inside our neighbor's house. Now, now when you let your friends, you, when you let your neighbors come over, you know, a lot of our, in Mexico, a lot of our, our things are similar. We like the similar types of music, similar types of food and everything like that. So we're, we're, we're closer related to the people, let's say in Mexico, than to someone from Brazil or from someone from Argentina or from someone from the Middle East or Southern Africa or wherever, right? We're more, so so it's almost like, okay, I know our neighbors are crazy and okay, well, maybe we can, but 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 even them, they're, they're, our neighbors, they're killing their politicians. The journalists, I don't even have a number, but journalists get killed 
all the time in Mexico. Imagine Tucker Carlson or these people that you see on Fox or whatever. Oh, damn. Boom. Damn. What the fuck? Why? Because he said something. Who did he say something about? That's what happens in Mexico. That's the culture in Mexico. People get not assassinated. Politicians, reporters, journalists. Now imagine other nations that are way worse off than Mexico, let's say. What kind of things do you think they are used to over there? In the favelas in Brazil? Forget about it, man. Someone like us, someone like me, you won't survive in those places. Because those places become their own little systems. They have their own little, you know, it's even hard to imagine. You can see some videos from Vice or from, you know, on, on YouTube that go into these places, it's it's amazing that people can even survive like that. There's organization, but it's like chaotic organization. The robbing and the stealing and the hurting and the murdering and the, there's no justice. You get, somebody gets killed in a favela, robbed, there's no justice. Go find a cop. Go find a cop to, and, I, and tell them that somebody's picked your pocket or stole your whatever. Go find a cop in Mexico when you get robbed. See what they say. See what they do. Culture is very important. Because it can be a detriment to our own safety, to our own mental health, to our own ability to, you know, even just to survive outside of our own dwellings. There's people that come from places where where they kill each other because they're from a different tribe. There's places like that all around the world. Oh, they're, they're, that person's from a different tribe. Let's get them. They ain't they ain't uh, um, they don't they're not worthy of of respect or or, you know, to treat them like humans or anything. A lot of societies haven't modernized. In, in their way of thinking. Uh, so it actually reflects on their society. You know, things have been done. Um, things have been done wrong for so long in some of these places that this is the result where they are at now is the result of, of never getting their act together. And then once people get their act together, society becomes good. I mean, damn, look, we have electricity. Damn, we have internet. I can call my friends. I can do, I can go to the store. I can do all these things. Think society could become beautiful and give you everything that you need. It'll provide everything that you need. But right, it's up to us to maintain it. We have to fight for it. We have to learn about it. We have to act right and follow these, these ways and these modes that we've been following for so long that have proven that this is the result of what of being good. All of this, all of these things that we have are the result of so many years of people following a certain method and mode of respect and whatever people, you know, because of religion, Christianity, the Bible, whatever. There's there's um, there's there's a, um, a method that is taught, let's say, in the religious books on how to behave, on how to treat each other, on how to build a government, on, on what you'd expect from, from your leaders, all these things, right? But once we stop paying attention to it, right? Once we stop fighting for it, once we um, let pe um, those that are that, that we've put in charge of our society, our politicians, our leaders, once we stop paying attention to them and holding them accountable and letting them do whatever it is that they do and, and, and not care, if we stop caring, then little by little, we will start losing all of these things that, that we have, that, that we've had up to now. It takes, it takes for all of us, 
you know, for you that's listening, for me, my neighbors, my parents, my brother, people out there, it take it's up to us to behave in the way that we want society to go. Now, we've put these leaders uh, in, in these positions in our, in our government that are now that these people that we've put our trust in, a lot of them for a lot of years, they've, they've almost, it's like they've turned their back on the American people. Everything, um, everything that they're doing for the foreigner hotels in New York, food, there's stories out there of, of EBT cards, food stamp cards with thousands of dollars, rent, rents being paid for six month, six month blocks in advance. They're renting out hotels, they're renting homes, they're building shelters, they're building tiny homes, they're building these places to house and to to accommodate millions of people from all over the world who have no connection, no understanding of our way of life. They might have seen how America is on TV, but they don't know our laws. They don't know our modes, our methods. And it can become a problem. And it has become a problem in some areas. And if this continues, it will become even more of a problem. Because, because as I see it, as these numbers keep growing and people that are lawless, a lot of, a lot of folks are lawless. I mean, they're, they're coming in, right up, their first act as, uh, as, a, as a visitor to our nation is to be lawless. And that's your first act. Coming into my house, the first thing you do is you break uh, my vase. You're getting, you're getting, you're gonna turn around and walk out that freaking door. You know what I'm saying? So your first act is already lawlessness. What else am I to expect? This is about us. This is about our safety and our protection and our future. And that's not even getting into the um electoral college and and uh, uh, the seats in the Congress and all these things, uh, the um, uh, when they count all the people to census, it adds it adds uh, districts. So so when you you have, let's say, let's pick L.A., you know, however many million people you add another million people. Well, it's going to create a few more districts, a few more seats in the Congress. And if you were to put them in in specific areas, you can actually affect um, the uh, the the delegations from some of these uh, states to the Congress. And then think about this. You know, our representatives are supposed to represent the the citizen, the resident, the legal resident of 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 these counties, of these cities, of these states. That's who they represent is us, me and you, not the foreigner who just happened to walk right in. And now he has a hotel and now he has EBT card and and food stamps and everything. There's people out here in my neighborhood. There's people, homeless people who don't have EBT cards. They have a hard time getting food stamps, but they're giving people strangers from all over the world who are lawless, who just came here. Oh, here's a room. Here's a hotel. Here's some spending money. Here's some food money. Why? What is the purpose? What is that supposed to accomplish? What about when the money runs out? What is that person going to do? They don't have a job. They don't have a home. They don't have family here. What are they supposed to do? How are they going to react? We start getting some of these gangs from the Middle East. Some of these people from the Middle East. They fight with swords. They fight with knives. They're fucking crazy some of these people from wherever this is, is this what we want now we got to stay strapped we're americans we got to stay strapped especially now because now the possibility of being robbed or being attacked 
by a, a foreigner is much more higher simply because they've been allowing them to come in. Yeah, we commit crimes amongst each other, the Americans, but folks, these folks from all over the world come from places that don't have law and order, come from places that the cops don't come when something happens, come from places where they don't respect each other's lives. That's where some of these folks come from. And all of a sudden they're here in your in your society, in your city, in your neighborhood, interacting with you. There's going to be a clash. We're not supposed to like we're not supposed to I'm not supposed to change everything for you that that comes in. I'm going to accommodate you in the most basic forms. Right. But it's up to you to to assimilate yourself into our way of life, into our way of behavior, into our modes of thinking and driving and and uh, communicating with each other. Uh, how we respect each other, how we treat each other, how we think about our our home, our homeland, our territory, our laws. You, the visitor, are supposed to assimilate to us. And I understand it's not your fault. Some of you were probably tricked into coming here. Some of you were were probably brought here. I don't know when you didn't quite understand, but. There's a problem. There's a problem. We come first. The American citizen comes first, not the foreigner. And especially not the illegal foreigner. You come, you come right, you come proper, you knock on the front door and I let you in. If I don't like the way you look and I think you have uh, uh, issues with how you're behaving, you're not coming into my house. It shouldn't be so hard for us to to, you know, to to think in, in a manner like this, because when we when we use logic and wisdom, right, and reasoning, we think broadly, right? People who, who, who oh, well, they're, you know, they're asylum seekers or they're poor, or whatever. They think narrow minded. That's narrow minded. Like you're thinking like this big when you think uh, uh, with a wide, a wide range of, you know, uh, effects, cause and effects, what can happen here in the uh, housing and what can happen in the working, what can happen in the community, what can happen culturally, right? It's a wide spectrum of, of the things that we're looking at to see how this, how could this thing affect us? If not little, oh, they're poor. Everybody's poor. We're the richest country in the world. Everybody in the, in the world is poor. So when you hear that example, oh, they're just trying to flee. It, that's Eight billion people that are trying to flee uh, poverty or trying to flee someplace that's that's messed up. We have to start thinking a little bit broader than than the mo than the narrow minded ways of thinking of the modern Democrat Party, let's say, or the liberal, you know, the liberals, the way they think, the progressives or whatever. They don't use logic. They don't use reasoning. They don't use wisdom. They've like the Latinos, they've always they've always um, gaslighted us with the migration, with with illegal immigration, because like I was talking earlier, our neighbors, Mexico, hey, those are our neighbors. It shouldn't be a problem. Right. We should be OK with our neighbors coming in. Right. They've always used us, the Latinos, the Mexicans. They've always gaslighted us with this issue for, for so many years. In, in 1986, uh, and I'm sorry, uh, around 1996, I went to Washington, D.C. Uh, to it was a one of these marches for dignity with the Latinos. And, you know, um, I went and I, I wore the, you know, a hoodie. I mean, uh, uh, like, a you know, uh, <laughs> Antifa mask and <clears throat> I had my Rage Against the Machine shirt and, you know, I was I wanted to go. I wanted to fight. I wanted to whatever, because I had been told, you know, uh, for so long about how, how how they hate the Mexicans and and the uh, and the laws for my for immigration are against Mexicans and this and that. 
So I actually went to a march and I was in my mind, I, was, I wanted to, you know, I wanted to fight. Like, where's these cops at? Let's riot. You know what I'm saying? But now nah, for the most part, people just went to to kind of march and to not even protest too much. We they had a, some speakers and then then everybody kind of just spread out and went to the museums and stuff. So it was it was kind of a sham. You know, like I, I got sold a bill of goods. Right. Because I went there thinking that it was going to be something like, you know, what you see on TV and all this. But now nah, it wasn't, you know, there was no fighting or nothing. <laughs> and I'm kind of glad, too, now as an adult, thinking I don't I wouldn't want to catch any any uh, charges or anything, uh, you know, out of, out, of, out of state. You know what I'm saying? Especially in D.C. But they riled people up. They were on the news and there was churches and groups. Like I found a church that had a bus, some buses going and all that. They said just 75 bucks. And and you bring bring a couple snacks, bring a change of clothes, bring some food, bring some money and you ride with. So so they were bringing buses from churches, from uh, from neighborhoods and from all these places to Washington for that March. Right. And that was in 96. And they still have. And here's the thing is, I'm not asking for. Laws like the ones that they're trying to pass that makes people illegal and all this. No, no. I want security, right? I want the border secure. The laws already states that the border should be secure. The law already states that people should be deported when caught, right? Especially criminals. But they're not enforcing these laws. I want enforcement of the laws and maybe some new laws that will tighten it up a little bit more. You know, where, where? It won't be so easy for just anyone to come right in. Terrorists, criminals, all kinds of people that are just walking right in. And just because they're here, they're not going to just change overnight. Oh, I'm in America now. Say, I'm not going to do crime no more. I'm not going to. I'm going to treat women right now. All of a sudden, you know, I'm not going to. I'm not going to extort people. I'm not going to break into. I'm in America now. That's not how it works. Folks bring that thing, you know, like when we say over here, like when people move out of the hood, they go to a nice neighbor, but they bring the hood with them. The same thing. Folks bring their culture, their ways of life, their modes and methods with them here. And we're going to have to deal with it. We, the law abiding citizen. Who's who's used to the predictability in my neighborhood, who's used to the predictability in my uh, while I'm driving down the road. Right. We're used to that because of so many years of all of us behaving in a certain manner. But once we stop doing that, once you once you add millions of people who do not behave, it's like you're infecting the the process there. You know, it's taken this long for us to get to where we're at. And now you're throwing in, you know, there's a wrench thrown right on in. And no one, no one should see this as proper. No one should see this as correct. And no one should be cheering on the uh, the importation of millions of people, not just here in America, but to the West. It's happening all over uh, in the European countries. Boats. And my question, like, who's paying for this? Who is sending them? Well, what does the picture look like on the on the on the other end of that picture? Not not the receiving end, but the end that's sending, you know, the shipping end. How does that, what's happening on those nations over there? People running across the border into Spain, uh, uh, trying to get into Poland, all these things. So many people, so many people being moved. And this is not a natural thing. This is not a natural thing. When there's natural disasters, when there's all these things, people start moving. There hasn't been any of that. So when we see millions of people being moved, there's somebody behind it. We're not here to speculate or anything, but there's something going on and we need to start paying attention. And we need to also just be uh, sure and, and uh, about our culture and what we are and who we are, our law and order, our, 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 um, uh, our laws, right? Our, the way of, of prosecution and police and systems with our, with our uh, governors and politicians. Right. We need to reassure ourselves of who we are uh, and what we believe in. I'm an American. I love this country. 
I love our way of life. I love being able to drive them down the street or walk across the street to the park. I, I'm, I love being able to coexist with people in restaurants, in downtowns, at festivals, um, just being able to talk with people without worrying about uh, something that's out of the uh, ordinary, something that we're not used to, something that is unpredictable without having to worry about those things. But as more and more people come from places around the world that have nothing to do with how we behave or how we act, then that peace, that, that, uh, that ability to, to feel safe is going to diminish more and more and more. We, it's up to us. It's up to us. The culture on how it's defined by our behavior. Now, there's going to be clashes. There's going to be clashes. It's, it's too late for, you know, this, these numbers that we've seen. It, it's, it's nothing like we've ever seen before. So we are beyond the point where, ah, oh, everything's going to be cool. No, there's going to be clashes and there's going to be um, in some places around the world, in some spots in Europe, in some places, maybe in America, there's going to be clashes and it's going to get ugly and violent and I don't want to see it. But it's going to happen. And it's unfortunate. It's up to us. You know, it's up to us to to protect our way of life. How we do that, our own, our own situation will decide, our own city will decide where we're at, what state. All of that will determine what happens to you or in, in your community. But we have to be strong. We have to be vigilant. We have to be uh, sure about who it is that we are, right? About how I'm going to behave. How I'm going to treat everyone else. But in America, we have a culture of, of being cowboys. So that's another part of it, too, is being ready. You know, personal protection at your home, you know, I'm saying you get your pew pews, whatever. Like, it's all good if you if you carry it's all good. Stay vigilant. You know, we're the we're the only ones that are going to be able to uh, change this. Our politicians aren't going to change this. We're going to do our part. We're going to vote. We're going to do our best to get the right people there in, in position in these positions that will obey the law and will enforce the law. Right. Because we need to preserve what it is what it is to be an American. It's a privilege to be here. You know, you should, it's a privilege to be here. It's not a given, you know, not just anyone should come and, and no, it should be seen as a privilege and, and guarded with, with everything to protect our way of life, to protect our culture, to protect, these things that have that made us what we are. We just got to be more prepared. We just got to be more um, ready to answer when people, you know, when they throw stuff at us and the politicians or when our neighbors or our friends or whatever who agree with these type of things. We have to be uh, ready and willing to answer them in the right, proper manner and say, no, 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 no. This is about us and you. This is about civility this is about law and order we have to know some things right we have to be tough we have to be strong we have to be healthy you know you can't fight off the enemy if you ain't exercising or you ain't working out or you ain't right so it's, it's a preparation of us that's our culture too like that's that's what america is we have to protect our culture this american culture this way of life, the rule of law, the constitution, our way of life, we have to, it's going to be up to us 
first and foremost here on the ground in our neighborhoods, in our cities, in our homes, in our families. And then it reflects outward. And as the time goes on and these conflicts start and stuff like. Look, the next civil war is not going to be fought between Americans. It's not going to be American versus American. I fear that it's going to be American versus foreigners. So it's up to us to make sure that we are, you know, that we are acting in the right manner, that we are behaving properly, that our culture is, is, is right for society and for the success of society and the future of our society. And that includes a bunch of moving parts from what we eat to how we behave to what we carry, how we stay strapped, how we know how to fight, we know how to drive, all these things, multifaceted. So we got to be tough. We got to be strong. We got to be strong-minded and willed. And we got to be ready. And let's just defend our way of life by just being the best that we can be. And when the moment comes, we are ready and willing to stand in the gap. I think we'll leave it there. <laughs> All right, folks. All right. Well, no, nah, man. I'm sorry, man. It's just that, golly, it's just that this thing with the, with the immigration is just so, it's such a problem. And it's a huge problem all across the world. And it's going to be, it's becoming a problem here in America. And I'm, I'm, a, I'm fearful that it's going to become so much more worse. So thinking like we just needed to talk a little bit about that. Now, speaking of culture, as you can see, I'm wearing my Cowboys shirt. And, and here's the thing about culture, like in Dallas and Oak Cliff, especially in Oak Cliff, like where I live, like the game's going to start here in a little bit. Uh, but if you were to go drive out during the game and there's hardly any cars on the streets, you go stop at, so there's nobody at the store. They're buying beer, maybe whatever. The streets are pretty much empty. Uh, in probably mostly all of Dallas, but I know in my neighborhood for sure because Cowboys is is uh, game time and everybody just going to sit back and watch the game. Um, but that's another part of our culture too is uh, how we, you know, watch sports and follow these teams and all of that. Culture is a great thing, man. It really is, dude. We're, and, and America is so unique because it takes so much of, of like, it's like the world is here. But we're America. We're not the world. We are America, right? But America represents so many different parts of the world. But we have to be, you know, we have to be right because all of that can go away, dude. All of that can go away. And so it's up to us to do all of the things that we need to do to maintain that culture and all of that. All right, guys. Well, we'll leave it there. I hope you enjoyed this conversation. I've, I've been busy. It's been ah, but thankfully, you know, we had some some uh, some episodes and stuff for you there um, with Charles and all that. I hope you enjoyed that. And um, I just, uh, you know, I was really waiting been thinking about this already for a while uh for a, about a week or so uh thinking of what was the next now like two weeks like once i figured that it was going to be about culture i started all right well let's let's try to let's try to knock it out um well let's just see where we where we go let's just be the best we can be that's all i ask from you and also if you enjoyed the show i hope you did if you did please tell your friends and your family and share and subscribe Hit the like button, hit the follow button wherever you are listening to us. Uh, follow me on X, please. Doing a lot of stuff over there, growing an audience. So if you do like what you hear, please go over there and uh, follow us. What else? That's it. In the meantime, people, please, I want you to stay healthy. I want you to stay safe. Maintain the culture. Maintain the culture. Be proud to be an American. Love that flag. Sing them songs. Show people that you love this land. I love it. I love it. I love it. All right, guys, stay safe. Stay healthy. We will talk soon. Peace out, folks. This is Thesis.